This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, we're writing our wish list to the film Santa. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques. Go to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and it's that time of year again. Time to break out my filmmaker's Christmas list. Just a whole bunch of goodies that are must-haves or stuff I've just been drooling all over. So let's not waste time. Let the salivating begin. Starting with Prepro, we have screenwriting software, which I have been using too lately, Slugline, which is a sleek and simple app for Macs. I love this one, super clean, makes it much more visually pleasing to write and without all the clutter. It goes for $40 on the App Store with the only downside being that it's Mac only. My other app of choice is Fade In. I do find myself using this one more often because it's on Mac and PC, so I can just jump between systems without issue since my laptop is a Mac and my desktop is a PC. Like Slugline though, it's clean and simple, so it feels nice to write on, although not quite as nice. This one is also $10 more expensive at $50. Moving on to storyboarding, on the more elaborate and pricier end, we have Frameforge 3D, definitely on the pricey end at $400 to start, but if you can swing it, it's definitely worth the price. The customization is insane, and you can make rough animatics, which is incredibly helpful for bigger action scenes and VFX work. A cheaper and very effective alternative to Frameforge would be Shot Pro, which is a 3D previs app for Apple devices. It's only $30, and for that price, it's actually very powerful. You can do a lot of the same sorts of things that you can do with Frameforge, though obviously not as detailed. And it's a great place to start learning different camera angles to play with in your story since you could just try about anything. Then we have Shotlister, which is a must-have on any production. I do. We've talked plenty about this one, so I'm not going to go in depth. Then our latest pack, Writing 101 with Seth Worley. I didn't make this pack. Seth did, so I can say that it is a great place to start in writing and an awesome resource for inspiration. Moving on into cameras, we're going to start with a super low budget. If you're looking to spend under $300, a good idea might be to grab a Canon T2i off of eBay. I just grabbed one recently for a friend. It's still a really solid low budget cam. Moving up into the sub $1,000 range, we have the Canon 70D, another great DSLR that is solid for video and photography, goes for $900 new, or you could get a refurbished model for around $650, like this one here from Canon. Moving up again in price and quality, we have the Sony a7S, which as you know is the low light king and also shoots internal 4K and solid slow motion now with the two. Goes for $3,000 and you can see more about this in an episode we just did right here. Next up is one of my production cameras of choice, the C100, which now with the Mark II is even better than before. Love the image quality, in-camera audio is excellent, and features like the built-in ND make it perfect for running gun work. Downside here is the price at $5,500. Moving up the cost ladder again, we have my wishlist camera that I am drooling all over, the Canon C300 Mark II. I won't go into why this camera is so epic since we did a full episode on it right here, so definitely check that out. However, this one is only for those with some money to spend since this guy goes for $16,000 dollars a huge chunk of change but if you're running a production company and looking for a workhorse of a camera this would be my choice if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to the c300 mark ii with a lot of the same features look at the sony fs7 i haven't used it myself but it's half the price and looks pretty fantastic and finally my specialty camera pick would be dji's new osmo basically it's that new jacked up inspire cam on a handheld gimbal i'm definitely going to be getting my hands on this one soon and we move on again into recorders starting again from the lower budget area we have the atomos ninja Ninja 2 at under $300, then the Ninja Blade, which has a larger and better monitor and goes for $495. That's also the one I use when I'm trying to beef up my C100's image. Then we have my recorder of choice for larger productions, the Odyssey 7Q Plus, which goes for $2,300 and can record 4K. If you need to bring that cost down and still need 4K, take a look at the Atomos Ninja Assassin, which goes for $1,300. You save $1,000 and still get 4K recording. Of course, you are losing a lot as well, but there is always give and take when you're trying to stay on budget. Then moving into camera rigs and stabilizers, we have one of my current favorite tools, the DJI Ronin. Great gimbal at a much lower cost than the Movi. You can see my full review on that one right here. Other than that, all my rig suggestions stay the same from last year, so you can check it out in last year's episode. On to audio, we have the Tascam 70D recorder, which is my main recorder right now and goes for $250, which is crazy cheap for the quality that I get out of this guy. Then the one that I'm looking to get next, the Zoom F8, which is an 8-track recorder with excellent specs at a much lower cost to its competitors. Although it's 
works with thousand dollars and that seems like a lot for a recorder when you put it next to the four thousand eight hundred dollar six channel recorder from sound devices you can see how great that price really is you can also control the zoom f8 from your smart device so there's that for mics as always i'm going with my rode mics on the lower budget end you have the ntg4 and then on the higher end my mic of choice is the ntg3 and if you're looking for a good lavalier system check out their new rode link which i did a review on right here now we take a quick break and then finish up our list of goodies Domain.com is where I go to register all my domains. Now they have .club. .club is universal, understood globally, perfect if you're doing anything on the interwebs because the interwebs is all about community and collaboration, which makes .club perfect. .club is only $9.99 a year. Thousands of options are still available. And if you use a coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout, you get 25% off your domain names. That's a bargain. It, it is a bargain. That is a bargain. Yeah, so when you think domain what names, kind of show are you think running? domain.com. What? I don't know. I couldn't think of anything to say that sounded cool, but I saw a movie last night and it said that. Okay. It's a good deal, though. It's taking way too long for you to explain this. Logo. Jumping right back in with grip goodies, we have a low-cost green screen setup, which comes with the screen, stand, and two lights. The lights aren't the best, but good enough to have around for some extra lights. Then we have my absolute favorite clamp. This is the Gaffer Grip. You can mount just about anything using this guy. I found it incredibly useful to have in my kit. Next, we have C-Stands, which are the absolute musts on any project for me. Another mounting anything tool. Impact and Matthew stands are both solid and well-priced C-Stands. For bounce, reflectors, and diffusion, unless you need something collapsible or massive, I just say to save your money and build your own. For diffusion, just use a shower curtain or bed sheet. And for bounce, check out this episode on how to build an excellent bounce board. I built it insanely cheap and I actually use it way more than my $200 bounce. And finally, the biggest must have out of this section is sandbags. This goes a long way to make sure everything is secure and safe. This six pack from Digital Juice is solid and really well priced. Moving on to lights, on a low budget end, you could build out an entire lighting kit out of an assortment of bulbs and these clamp lights that I'm always talking about. But if you wanted to move up from that to more pro lights, my current favorite light is this LED called Lightstorm from Aperture. It's a 1K equivalent panel. It's dimmable, of course, and has a beautiful light with massive output. It is a bit pricey at $700, but for what you're getting, it's a great price. Then we have my other favorite, but very expensive, four bank light from Kino Flow. Probably the most beautiful quality of light in my kit. Moving on to software, you all know that I use Adobe's Creative Cloud Suite. It's the best out there in my opinion. With this, you pay a monthly fee and get access to every piece of software they make. It is perfect for me and I think almost any production company, but if you're looking to own the software without paying that monthly fee and need to go cheaper, check out HitFilm 4 Pro, incredibly solid, all in one software with some impressive features. Then of course we have Red Giant Gear, which I'm also always talking about. Their Magic Bullet Suite is my go-to for color correction and grading, and Primat, Pluralize, and Trap Code get used on the daily for us, all must-haves in my opinion. And finally, Video Copilot goodies, both Element 3D and Optical Flares get used on pretty much every project we do as well, especially Optical Flares, even when they aren't added noticeably, we're usually dropping in flares in somewhere to sweeten the shot. And finally, we end with online goodies like educational resources. Of course, you have the freebies and some paid that we talked about two weeks ago, so I won't get into those, but some other great ones are CineFX, which is now a digital magazine that dives into the techniques behind what it takes to pull off special and visual effects in all major films. So many incredible mind-opening articles here. Then there's FX PhD, which is like an online college for visual effects artists. Tons of great stuff here, though it can get a bit pricey. And finally, we have mine. Again, the Creative Live Gorilla Filmmaking course, which is 18 hours of pre through post-production goodness. We set up lights, show how to build a scene out from scratch. It's good stuff, and you can get that right here. Logo. But that's it, my 2015 Filmmaker's Christmas list. Feel free to post your picks in the notes below. I just added a gear pick section, which is broken out to low, mid, and high budget. So take a look at that right here. I just started it, and I'm going to continue to add goodies to it as I find and use them. And I'll see you guys next week when I get eaten by a sand tiger because I'm not the chosen one. Ow.